welcome to the Ashton Manual Introduction. This is a video series which aims to take the contents of the Ashton Manual and present them to you in a format that's a little more digestible and more accessible to those who in particular might be dealing with some cognitive limitations due to benzodiazepine use or might even be overwhelmed in caring for somebody with a benzodiazepine related injury. Um, the Ashton Manual is essential reading for anyone who's either looking to get off of their own benzodiazepine or who is trying to help somebody else taper off of their own. Um, basically, anybody with any expertise in the field of benzodiazepines has either read the research of Ashton or has come across the reach of somebody else who is quoting Ashton. <laughs> to put it bluntly, if you don't know Ashton, you don't know benzodiazepines. This video will introduce you to the work of Ashton and why it's so important to the field of benzodiazepines and then we'll go through the introduction to the manual and the points that Ashton herself highlights in that. Professor Ashton received her doctorate from Oxford in the 1950s and later on in the 1970s she became a fellow of the Royal College of Physicians. She was an NHS consultant um, she was a professor emeritus uh, at the University of Newcastle in the fields of psychopharmacology and psychiatry. She was a, a researcher and a lecturer. She produced over 250 scholarly works, 50 of which were just specific to benzodiazepines. And she was a clinician. She ran a benzodiazepine withdrawal clinic for a decade where she helped 300 patients get safely, successfully, and permanently off of their benzodiazepines. Now, even more impressive than her resume is the fact that Professor Ashton had a 90% success rate while running this clinic. That is impressive. And that is why we stand up and take notice of what this person has to say. In 2007, Professor Ashton felt it was necessary to add a message um, to the introduction of the manual. In this, she highlights three main points that while addressed in the manual, perhaps hadn't been given enough attention and maybe weren't being listened to enough, quite frankly. So here are the three points that Ashton wants you to know. The number one point that Ashton highlights, the very first thing that she brings out, is that no patient should ever be forced off of a benzodiazepine. In order to have a successful taper, the patient must be the one not only to realize that they should get off the benzodiazepine, but also believe that they can do so successfully. And the way that she did this was to have the patients be in charge of their own taper program. This means that the patient is the one who develops the tapering schedule and presents this to the doctor. The doctor plays more of a supportive role, and this will be addressed more in, in later chapters. But basically, the patient is the one who determines not only when they should um, withdraw, but also the rate at which they withdraw and the length of time that it takes to get off of the benzodiazepine. So there you have it. If you want to have a 90% success rate, let the patient be in control of their own taper program. The second point Ashton addresses is the subject of alcohol, that if alcohol is to be used at all, it should be done so in moderation, very little, of course, because alcohol affects the same receptors that benzodiazepines do, and it can greatly interfere not only with the withdrawal process, but the process of recovery as well. And the third point Ashton addresses is the subject of antibiotics. Many people don't realize how problematic antibiotics can be for somebody who is in withdrawal. And not only this, but specifically the problem of a class of antibiotics known as fluoroquinolones. These are antibiotics such as ciprofloxacin and levoquin. And these antibiotics actually displace benzodiazepines from their receptors. So anyone who might either be on a benzodiazepine or in the process of getting off who is prescribed a fluoroquinolone um, can have a very severe reaction. And Ashton advises against prescribing fluoroquinolones to people on benzodiazepines, if at all possible. And there it is, an introduction to the world's leading authority on benzodiazepines and the three points that she feels you need to understand before even getting into the manual itself. Thank you for watching, and please join me for the rest of my series.